Yo, what's good, what's poppin'? What it is, what it ain't, what it could be, what it should be, what it would be. I am Cam Newton, the son Mr. Boogie to all. And today, as always, I'm here to give good content for the masses and to always keep it funky for your asses. Now listen, this person needs no introduction, but I'm going to give him a proper introduction. We share a lot of similarities, playing in the SEC, first overall pick, and just having an athletic prowess like no other, I present the summit and introduce the others, Eli Manning. That's an introduction. Thank you, Cam. Yes, sir. I appreciate that. Man. That was impressive. Yeah. It's not your first I rodeo. I try. It is. This, this, whole, new, <laughs> this whole new thing of, of communication and, and conversation is something rather t relatively new, but at the same time, I'm comfortable. I love talking to people. And I've been burnt enough in the media that I know I will never come at it without the purity of, of, of just trying to know the individual better. That's awesome. Man, you didn't tell me I had to dress up. I needed a bow tie. You're in a, you're in a bow tie. You I got, think that you email is... You got a is, denim suit on, which I've never seen before. I man. sent it. It may have <laughs> went straight to the trash email spam, or the spam, spam. You know what I mean? My but bad. My bad. We were talking about this earlier, but... What makes Eli tick, like, for so long? And I'm going to get to the questions, but the thing that just popped in, you know, as, as, as we're here on set, like, what make, like, what's your thing? Like, what, what's the dirt? What's the tea? <laughs> what's the tea? I, you know what? I try to keep things simple. Mm -hmm. I, I try to keep life simple, but I love to compete in things. Yep. And so I like finding, even in retirement, like, I like finding sports and things I can compete in, whether that's golf, or I've picked up tennis, or mm. hey, you give me on a paddle court, or a pickleball, or just yeah. like whatever you can uh, compete in. You know, I kind of gave up basketball back in college when I saw someone get hurt, uh. but you know, play some horse with the kids, and yeah. so, but. Uh, Are you in any type of like, leagues like the YMCA, the country club or yeah, something like that. Yeah, some, do some, uh, you know, do some like paddle, paddle leagues, which yeah. is like a, a, a northeast tennis kind of uh, racquetball type yeah. sport. So uh, get in some of these little leagues and little country club uh, sports. Uh, you know, my wife and I play some mixed doubles tennis together. No way. Take on, take on some other, other, you know, couples. That's our thing. You know, it was just kind of fun, you know, just to, you know, my wife and I have never competed in anything. Yeah. I had never played tennis and, and, you know, a whole lot. And, you know, she invites me out there and I... She plays, your she wife plays, plays She plays. Okay. I don't. I mean, but I've picked it up since just to try to mm -hmm. compete with, right. and win some of these. Right, it's like, right, hey, right. we're going we're to play together. We got to go put a good show on, yeah. right? And it has to be the Manning standard, right? <laughs> I think you guys have done something that's like, unprecedented in a way, but when you hear the Manning name, it's like the first family of football. Well, I think my dad, my dad started it all yeah. and uh, he set it up and, you know, I think a lot of people assume that like he had some master plan to create these quarterbacks yeah. uh, when we were growing up, but, you know, nothing could really be further from the truth. He was just trying to raise good kids. Mm -hmm. We were just, we liked playing sports. We played basketball, we played baseball, we played you know, football, but you know, like, I think the great thing about football is it's a sport you can kind of pick up late in life right. and, and you, you probably get more playing at recess and in the backyard at fields, just playing other sports can make you a better football player. Right. And uh, you know, it's not like you gotta play in leagues when you're six years old and commit that to a life of football at a mm -hmm. young age. You can just be, you know, play a bunch of sports and eventually you get into, you know, kind of high school, you start playing as a team and figuring out if you can do this thing. Yeah. So he didn't have no master plan like uh, Serena and Venus' no, father. No, no. He I, just had a template <laughs> when you was out the womb, yeah. boom, this is how we go around. There was no world. master plan. And, and my dad was very, I mean, he kind of said, hey, I live my football life. Yeah. If you want to get into it, go do it. I'm happy to help, but, you know, I'm not going to be the dad pushing you into certain things. Right, right. I think that's, that's extremely 
needed because even for me, I didn't play quarterback until high school, really, like a year before high school. And I think my father was a person in my life that I've always came home to a critiquing and analysis. You know, he was just always the person behind the fence. Right. And I asked him later on when I was an adult, just why? You know, because I think when you coach your son, when you coach your child all the way through, they're gonna grow a numb ear or a deaf ear to other coaches. You see sure. what I'm saying? Yeah. And I think is if it's if it's done out of purity and, and, and love, I think you can't lose with that, man. And, and Archie has done an unbelievable job with you, with you guys. My first question is this: How was it like, just the person that had to always live up? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. When a person when a person knows Eli Manning, right? They you know whether they know Peyton's your older brother, but before that, it was you know Archie's son. You know, whether coming into a league that your brother dominated for a long time or going to a college where your father, you know, was was a is a legend. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. How was that? You know, it was tough at times. Just, um, you know, it's not something you ask for. I mean, you gotta imagine for me, all of a sudden I'm a I'm a sophomore in high school. I'm starting to play a little football, but I'm still I'm the son of Archie Manning in New Orleans where he played his career and around the South and then Peyton's a junior mm -hmm. at the University of Tennessee, you know, up for Heisman trophies right. and, and everything going on. And I'm just saying, I just want to be a kid playing high school football yeah. with my friends. Like, I, I'm not asked to be, you know, the, for the news to be around or to be on TV and everything. So I think for me, I just tried, you know, tried to just keep things you know, just very simple, and just keep things tight, and have a, mm. a small group of friends, and hey, these are my buddies, and and just try not to like worry about you know things that are out of my control. Yeah. And you know, that's kind of like dealing with Peyton as he's going all of a sudden. He's the first pick in the NFL draft in high school. He was the Gatorade Player of the Year. Mm. He, all these things. I said, if I tried to be better than him. It would drive you crazy. Yeah. You, how do you? How yeah. are you? Can you be better than the first pick? How Correct. can you be better than all these things he was doing? And said, "Hey, I'm gonna work hard. I love playing sports. I love playing football. Mm -hmm. I love being with my friends, and competing. And I'm gonna, you know, do everything possible, you know, to go win games and be my best. But if I'm not as good as him or fall short in different ways, I'm not gonna yeah. let it crush me and 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 make that seem like I'm a failure." Of course, I think uh, you know, for me, I think I lived it. I saw it with my, with my younger brother, Kalen, right? Yeah. Out of high school, he never had his name. It was never Kalen Newton. It was <laughs> Cam's little brother, sure. Kalen. You know what I'm saying? It ne I, I, I seen him grow into a person very mature for his age, still mature. I would always call him my older brother rather than my younger brother. Um, but just him feeling the pressure, and not only that, he transferred from Howard to Auburn now that whole, you know, your, your brother got a statue. What the right. hell are you going to do in here? You know what I'm saying? It's just a, it's a real thing. You know what I'm saying? But for the person who sees this, you just got to be you. You just got to do you. And once, once you perfect that, everything else that comes with it, you know, you don't want to put too much on your plate. Yeah. You got to be comfortable in your own yeah. skin and just understand what your personality mm -hmm. is and just go out there and be a good person. And, and you know, that, that kind of can take you a long way. Yeah. My curious curiosity has to ask, obviously you having your children, right? That Manning household with Thanksgiving and Christmas, you guys are loaded. <laughs> you guys are loaded. How like, well, tell me, take me, take me to that point, like for a family reunion, you know what I'm saying? Peyton has his, Cooper has his, you know, you have yours, right? And then it's just like, well, it's fun, you know, as you, as you know, kind of playing football, you don't always get Thanksgiving and Christmas yeah, time together. Yeah, you're yeah. in practice, you're in season, you had everybody in different places, Peyton was playing. Mm -hmm. uh, but, um, you know, so, you know, growing up in New Orleans, uh, Mardi Gras 
mm-hmm. was our kind of get the families together. Wow. We'd go back to my parents' house, and, and, and we didn't, you know, you think of Mardi Gras, it's not the Bourbon Street yeah, yeah, party yeah. scene. It's kind of a PG, maybe PG-13 version yeah, yeah. of Mardi Gras. So kids might see some things, but not too right. much. But uh, They see uh, uh, Uncle Eli. <laughs> Uncle Eli, you're wobbling. <laughs> <laughs> but you'd go back there, and it, it's great. We'd go back, and, and you know, you, you've been around Coop, and he's, mm-hmm. he's crazy. He's got, you know, uh, one son that's getting recruited all over the country. Heavily. Other yeah. son's more like Coop and a, and a complete wild man and yeah. so, and a daughter. <laughs> and so just to see everybody together, uh, it's always fun. It's not as much football yeah. uh, talk as, as you might think. It's just, uh, you know, the fact that I'm up in New Jersey, Peyton's in Denver, Coop's in New Orleans, just kind of telling stories yeah. about what's going on in our lives. And, and to get, you know, see all the cousins together and them running around or playing right. p- pickup games in the front or, uh, you know, my kids getting on Coop's kids' shoulders to try to catch some beads. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, uh, it's, it's a good, you know, it's good times and, and, you know, it's hard to get everybody together. So, so the thing that you said without really saying it, and I want to tell the viewer this, for, you played in the league for how long? 16 years. 16 years. So with that 16 year span, right, you've never had an opportunity to out, if you're outside of you guys playing each other on Thanksgiving. Right. That you've never had a full family interaction on Thanksgiving or Christmas because of your work. Because of the work, Until yeah. probably now in retirement and everybody's yeah. able to do it if you guys wanted to. If, if, if you even can, yeah. You see so what I'm saying? It's been COVID and it's been yeah. traveling and everything else. So, I mean, really, I think the last, you know, the last Thanksgiving we would have had together you know, you know, was probably in 1994. What? Right? Yeah. What? But, but, but <laughs> people don't realize they see the they mega see, star, the right. person on the TV, the sacrifice. They don't see the sacrifices that you have to have, the discipline that you have to have, you know, from your family and doing certain things. Because for people who may not know, Football season is during the fall. <laughs> Heaven forbid if you're a good football team that year, you're missing, you're missing New Year's, you're missing uh, uh, Christmas, you're missing all these different things. And it's like, what, what am I gonna do? <laughs> Get fined out the ass, you right. know, trying to, trying to make it to every single family function? Or, you know, that's just the, the price you gotta take. And then all of a sudden, year after year after year after year, you miss opportunities that, you know, you may not never get back. And I'm not trying to, I'm not here to try to put the, the shadow on the light, but more or less than just to bring people into our world to say, man, it's so much that you got to sacrifice right. for the sport of football that, yeah. that we And I think play. that's what we tried to find other times where we could get together. So, right. hey, we don't get the main holidays, but we'll find a time where, you know, we were always close. The brothers like being with each other. We like going to see our parents. Yeah. And so... Um, you know, always find a reason to get together and bring the, bring the whole family together. Yeah. So here we go to the next one. We got from Louisiana, played college in Mississippi. How was it moving to New York out of all <laughs> cities? It's just like you got the South. Okay, South again. And yeah. then over here where it's just like this. It's scary. Perplex city where, you know, how, how, how long did it take you to kind of get used to, to this, this whole scenic view of, of, of the traffic? And yeah, no, it definitely took a while, especially just driving around, you know, New Jersey. And, you know, can't, you, you think you're like, hey, you're coming to the New York Giants. It's yeah. like, well, we're, you know, your, your headquarters is really in New Jersey. You right. play in New Jersey. And so, um, you know, and then New Jersey's kind of the, the roads are, are crazy, and that was my number one thing. And you know, as playing, like you have these early these pre- these meetings. Yeah. You know, meetings start at 7:45. You're a minute late. Oh, you know, you're getting fine. a letter. You're getting fined. You're <laughs> yeah, getting yeah, fined. Yeah. I was like, oh, well, you know, you, you kind of think, well, I can live in New York City. It's like, wait a minute, I gotta go through a tunnel or go over a bridge yeah. to get the price. Like, no. Yeah. So just just you know, the driving, figuring out that even, and then it's like, well, how do I? I want to, you know, got a, a Friday night you know during the off season mm-hmm. it's like hey i want to go into the city how do i even how do i get there yeah. Where do I, how do i get home and yeah. how do you you know kind of manage and this it? was before uber now there was no uber yeah. you had like a you know, taxi there was no you know there was hardly any gps they had to get yeah. like the gps you buy and you got to mm-hmm. like put up on the mountain it was right, like just right, a gps right. system that 
work sometimes, but it was, uh, you know, it was, there, was, there was some, you know, you left early, you still printed out your, your trips on, mm -hmm. you know, MapQuest and uh, oh, got your directions. So Old school. it took a little while to get used to it, but, uh, but now it's kind of become second nature, know how to, know how to navigate the city and, and, and the, the tri-state area. Man, listen, I, I've been coming to uh, New York for a long time. I probably, out of, let's say, 15 years of coming to New York, I probably drove in New York once or twice. <laughs> I don't know, like, it's so amusing to me just to hear a person talk about, hey, man, I'm on so-and-so and so-and-so, 17th and 34th. Like, walk a couple blocks. A couple blocks could be a mile. You know what I'm saying? As this whole lingo, you know what I'm saying, in New York, it's yeah. so much inspiration for me. Obviously, I'm a person who loves art, not just fashion, but art as a whole. And self-expression is something that, that I love, um, you know, with that. So I think, um, you know, obviously playing in the league as long as you've played, you've had many different talents around you. You know sure. what I'm saying? Good talents, bad talents, good guys, bad guys. You know what I'm saying? And I think the thing that you don't know as a quarterback until you're, you're thrusted to play quarterback, I think at the college level you kind of see it. But in, if, in, in the NFL is more than ever. You have the job to manage everybody's egos. Sure. Not only just from the locker room standpoint, it's the coaches too. <laughs> You see what I'm saying? It's management too, and it's like you're you're the glue in some per, uh, uh, places, or you're the pinata where everybody's just hitting you and blah 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 blah. Or you're the main trophy in the shrine when everything goes right. So, what would you say? First off, what personnel would you choose to pick Eli's all-time favorite? If you had, if I put the ball on the 20-yard <laughs> line and you have to go 80 yards go. to score to score with Let's say three minutes and 15 seconds left. Oh, we got a little time. All right. You got some time. You don't want to score too fast. You know what I'm saying? But at the same time, you know you're down by four, though. Oh, okay, yeah, got to get a touchdown. Got to get a tug. I've been there before. A couple times. Uh, so who are you rocking with? What okay. personnel are you rocking with first? Okay. And then who's, the, who's, the, uh, who's going to be your roster that you're going. There you go. So you know, we'll 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 uh, we'll go eleven personnel. Eleven so we'll go personnel. Three receivers. So tight, for the, for the tight end, one running back. There you go. Perfect. Let's explain it. So receivers, I think you got to go. You know, you got to get the big guy. Go Plaxico Burris. Plex. On the outside, right? You like you like the six six, two hundred thirty pound big receiver guy. in the in the slot. Going Victor Cruz. Vic. And then on the other outside, you go with Odell. I was about to right? say. I mean, that's a strong, oh, that's a strong mix right that's there. That's heavy. Right? That's you know? venomous. Mm -hmm. Who's your tight end? Tight end. Tight end, um, you know, tight end, I think we're going to go probably with Kevin Boss. What? I mean, you know, Shockey was there for a little bit, but he was kind of yeah. all over the place. Yeah. So it's kind of a Kevin Boss, Shockey. I play, I play with Shockey. Exactly. Uh, my you rookie year. Oh, my goodness. I love him and, to death. But Shockey, so it's, it's a combination. It's a, it's so a, Kevin. Kevin. Go Kevin for the, for the, for the two-minute drive. Mm -hmm. um, you know, and then running back. Running backs, running backs a, is a... Uh, it's probably Tiki Barber as your running back. You wow, know? I forgot about Tiki. Because Tiki was Tiki was talented. I had him early on, and he was talented. We had some other great running backs, Amai Bradshaw and Brandon mm -hmm. Jacobs, but just kind of that back who could catch it out of the backfield and, and get and, the protection and run it, and no, he, he's no, oh. he's gonna know exactly what's going on oh and all the goodness. protection. So Tiki, Tiki, uh, he saved me early on in my career yeah. and, and probably made me look better than I was at certain times yeah. in certain games. So he would, he would be, a, uh, he was a heck of a running So we back. got Odell, we got Vic, Victor Cruz, Plexico Blurs, Plexico Burris, uh, Kevin Boss, uh, Tiki, Tiki Barber. God! That's a good crew. Oh, that's, that's, that's a, good crew. a I think we're going to go score. That's heavy. That's you better. Score. That's one of them situations where you better score. There you go. It ain't even you, we got to score. We, like, we better score right yeah. here in this situation. Yeah, I think, man, you know, for just that whole overall analysis and especially how important the, the running back position is, you know, many different philosophies and systems ask you to do many different things. Sure. And I think when you have it's, – it's, it's a difference, especially – at the highest level, it's the difference between being talented because talent comes and goes, right? Sure. But who is the most probably cerebralist 
if that's even a word. I know what it means. So. You know what I'm saying? It's, Cerebral it's, person that you know, I like know what it means. It's you word. just it got works. it. Like yeah. they, they knew it's like, oh man, Eli, you calling a slant, but you already know, you know, it's going to be a conversion or you guys had that yeah. Wi-Fi connected at yeah. all times. Who's the person? Um, uh, Victor Cruz, uh, Victor Cruz, we, we put a lot on his plate and we, you know, it's this old Kevin Gilbride run and shoot mm -hmm. offense and we ran it the first couple of years and it was hard. We just didn't have the guys who could make all these decisions based off leverage. You know, you could either sit it down, you could break it in, mm -hmm. you could start to break in and wh whip it back out. You could just run a spray nine yeah. right off the get go or you could post it down the middle. So you had all these options. Mm. But there's got to be rules within that. And right. so you can't just wing it. There's got to be kind of right. set rules. And, and also, hey, if I'm going to break in, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to fake out and then break in. Right. So, you know, and so Victor Cruz is the one who just kind of took, um, you know, where we gave a guy maybe two or three options. He right. took it and said, hey, I can expanded. handle all six of he them. He expanded. I can, hey, if I see single high press and I got a, I got a seam, I'm just going to turn it into a spray nine. Right, hey, right, if right. all of a sudden, I, you know, I got outside leverage and a safety yeah. favor my side, I'll snap it in. And so we just roll with it. And I swear, I mean, over his two kind of two years where he had his great years, I mean, if he had 25 touchdowns, I, I think 20 of them were on the same kind of play yeah, where he yeah, just yeah, had, yeah, he yeah. had the read and he could do it. And, yeah. you know, you could just read his body language and that's what made him so hard to cover teams kept playing in a different defense and right, said, right, right. we're still running the same play. He just has different Correct. options. Right, it's hard to stop right, that. Right, right, right. I think that's so needed in, in life. I, I, obviously, you know, having a partner on, along your side and your wife, your, ki your kids, your children uh, in business, you know, having people that know you is essential. I remember, I'll never forget these words from Jerry Richardson, a person who uh, was the Carolina Panthers owner before it got bought out by David Tepper. One of the core values that he had was obviously, you know, leadership, things like this, things like that. But one word that stuck out to me that didn't necessarily match the competitiveness and the drive was harmony. Yep. Right. He always spoke on harmony. I was asked him one day, I said, hey, yo, so what does harmony mean with all these words? You got to be committed. You got to be, you know, be the toughest. You got to be this and that. And what does harmony mean? Harmony means there's no ego involved. Yep. You know what I'm saying? And as you're describing Victor Cruz, it's, it's my, my, my person, I would say. Would I already be, know. I already know. Oh, bro. Greg Olson. Bruh. I mean, I already know. You don't even have to say Greg it. Greg to me. Because watching, you know, because we had, Shula. had Mike Shuler yeah. as our offensive coordinator. Yeah. We're watching some of y'all's film, and I'm like, I'm like, what is this route? I, you know, <laughs> I, I said, you're saying this is China, this is a play, like, or whatever, yeah. certain you know, concept. I'm like, that's not the route that, that you right. say it is. They're like, right. well, we just let kind of Greg do, you yeah. know, kind of just wing it. Like right. Cam and Greg, they just kind of figured it out right. sometimes. I said, right. and that's kind of what, you know, sometimes with coaching, you can't overcoach. You, you gotta, can't, let, you you gotta, gotta let the players just kind of figure it, figure it out and get open. Because one thing about life, you, you always are evolving. You're always are learning and everybody's different. You can't coach Eli like you coach Cam. You can't coach Cam like you coach Eli. Right. You see what I'm saying? And the people who get it, they understand like, that's not to say, okay, my specialty may be fourth and one. We all know what the fuck is, <laughs> is about to happen, right? But fourth and one for you is just like, okay, Eli, shit, we got a uh, quarterback power. And it's like, what? No, yeah, what the, no thank you. No, -uh, uh -uh, <laughs> I don't want that, right? But my, my comfortability in certain situations is different. And if you ask a shark to run a 40, of course, you know, he's going he's gonna to struggle. But at the same time, we all are able to do these type of things and going back to harmony. Once you understand it, you, you, you can pinpoint that, then that's where, where you'll be good. I think, um, you know, overall, the thing that, this is my last question for me, I think we share something that may not be as publicized as it is, but it's so humbling, right? Being a first pick, you go from, okay, the whole offense is being catered to you. Everything, the whole franchise is being catered to you. What is Cam like? What is Eli like? Well, we got to make sure on the planes that he has this. And it's funny, when I was writing down my questions, I was like, I didn't even know that the guys that we had to prepare shared the last name, the same last name, Daniel Jones yep. and Mac Jones. That's right. Right? Going from seeing your career take off and 
Pro Bowl, All Pro, you know, situations, this, that, and the third. And then once that pick comes in, it's just like, oh shit. <laughs> <laughs> right. Oh, yeah. What's going on? Right. How was it for you and your whole tr your whole transition? Obviously, Daniel's still there. You know, what does the what does that do to a person's confidence? Because I don't I don't think people really know. Like, even though we're this macho man figure, with we're strong, we're tough, you're still human at the end of the day. Sure. Too. You know, and I, and I I think, kind of having dealt with having an older brother and kind of mm. following in that footsteps and and just kind of understand that what got me to this situation uh, and what made me have success early on was that, hey, I was gonna work hard, mm -hmm. I was gonna be committed, right. I was gonna do everything possible I could to go out there and have success. And if it didn't work, then you know that's just life sometimes. And mm -hmm. it wasn't because I, I didn't give it my all. And so I had no problem, I knew they drafted Daniel that, hey, I'm gonna work, I'm gonna work, but I'm gonna treat him like I've treated every other quarterback yeah. that's been in that room, and we're gonna talk football, and I, I like doing that. And, you know, I'm gonna give the opportunity to start. I know I got to make something happen these first games. Mm -hmm. If we don't, then, you know, that's, so just, that's just the way it is. It's like, I, I gave, I, I worked hard, I prepared, I did what I, you know, wanted to do, and eventually, hey, he was going to come over, and I, I told him, I said, I'm not going to make this awkward yeah. in the quarterback room. we got another four months where we're going to be hanging I out swear. every single yeah. day with each other. It's like, that's not fair to you. That's not fair to me. Yeah. That's not fair to Coach Shula and, and the coaches. I said, you know, I, I can handle it. I'm a big boy, yeah. and, you know, if, if you need anything from me, and I still, I, I mean, I'm still friendly with Daniel. I saw him yesterday. And I tell him every time, I said, hey, I'm not going to bother you. Yeah. I'm not going to be the guy texting you or giving you advice. But if you need anything, <laughs> I'm here for you. Like, right. if you need anything, you right. text me, you want to talk, you need to, you know, sometimes it's good to talk with another quarterback, Correct. right? Because not every, you can't talk to your best friend because mm -hmm. they don't know what you're dealing with. They don't know what it's like to be in the pocket yes. and, fa and facing a zone blitz or dealing Correct. with drama of receivers of complaining course. and this and that. Of so course. I said, if you just need a, you need someone just to vent to, right. I'm happy to be here for you. Right. Man. How is it for you? Uh, well, for me, I think <clears throat> our sport, and I have to say, I have to word this right, right? When you walk into that locker room, everybody is an alpha male. Sure. Everybody. And it's not about being the lion. It's not about being the gorilla. It's not about being the antelope. It's not about being the cheetah or whatever. It's just about, you know, going back to that word, you know, being harm harmonic. No. That sounds right. Harmony, yeah. right? That's the word that I'm trying to say. Harmonica. Using it. Yeah, that's, a, that's an <laughs> instrument. <laughs> exactly. But, but it's not harmony. once that happens, day one, you're automatically aggressive. Competitive, competitive in sure. some way, shape, form. Respectful, but, but competitive. And I think me and Max's relationship was always competitive. It never morphed into, you know, what it could be. And I think that was just the situation that we were in. And everybody knows me know, like, we had the best, you know, meetings because it's only but so much that I, we could talk about. <laughs> like, Coach, man, look, I need a break. I think I can speak for a lot of other people in this room. We need a break, so just give us like, I'm that type of player. I'm, right. I'm, uh, I, I'm the lighthearted person, but when it's time to get down to business, that is that. You know, Mac was a person who he knew he was a first pick and, and he kind of felt, you know, it's, it's my time, which he should. Sure. You see what I'm saying? Because I was the same way. When I got drafted, uh, uh, Jimmy Clausen had just got drafted the year before. He was the Panthers' first pick, but it happened to be in the second round. Right. Right? So he had all this promise that he kind of expected. So when Matt came, you know, we had that introduction where it was like, hey, man, you know, if you need me, I'll be here, da 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 But I don't think our relationship could be anything more than it was because we were competing versus each other. Yeah. You know, and whether he would ask, he would ask certain questions about, you know, this, that, and the third. But you also have to re be reminded that I was still learning a 20-year system, right. New system myself. You know, Brian Hoyer, he was impeccable, was, 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 was great. Um, you know, and, and Jared Stidham was there, too. So we, it, it was my job, I felt, to make everything comfortable you know, in the, the, the humanistic phases of the football game. 
in, in the cafeteria, in the locker room, just kicking the shit in, in the weight room or whatever. And I never wanted to be a distraction, never once was a distraction to that point, but I think it did snip our capabilities of our relationship because it was just so competitive, you yeah. know what I'm saying? And that's just the thing. So for me, you know, my time in New England, it was nothing less than everything that I expected it. But once, you know, and the, with the first round pick for the New England Patriots, the New England Patriots select Mac Jones, I already knew it was like, okay, I knew sooner or later that day was going to come. And it came in the respect that uh, Matt Patricia and um, Josh McDaniels at that time, he was still there, uh, and uh, Coach Belichick had, man, it was just a, a, a well-ran organization. So I couldn't just say like, oh man, like they, they help, you know, <laughs> me hate Mac even more. No, right. but it was just so competitive. And he came from, you know, that other school too. So mm. he was already prepared mm. for that. You yeah. know what I'm saying? There was nothing you know, so when they when they had that conversation for me to say, Cam, we got to let you go, it was all I almost felt like my gift was my curse, you sure. know, because I could have been that person for him. And he probably would have seen a different side of me, you know, that's just say, hey, bro, I'm here for you. Let me know if you need anything. Matter of fact, fuck it. I'm going over here to Dunkin Donuts. You want something? Da, 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 da. Right. Our relationship never got to that point because it was so competitive. But I knew when they gave the keys to him, it was going to be in good hands. He was prepared. He worked his ass off. He, you know, he could spin it, and he was just so intellectual to understanding things that he was being that he was that he was picking up at. I'm like, damn, like what you 27? Uh, he was, <laughs> you know, 21. Well, he was really 20, I think. You know, and 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 had that understanding. He was already prepared to be in that moment. So, it just sucks that the the industry that we're in you know, just brings out just one side to you. And you know, the great teams that you've been on, it was, you may not have been the most talented team, but one thing that you guys knew, you knew how to communicate, you knew how to kind of get the guys together. Hey man, every Monday night, bro, you know, Eli's hosting, hey, Tiki's hosting this week. Hey, you know, the wives would do certain things. Those are the special things yeah. that that you look back at and, and you'll miss. Yeah, definitely. The, 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 the closeness of the team, you get those teams that are truly unselfish, that like being with each other, mm -hmm. receivers like each other, yeah. they're excited when the other receiver scores touchdowns, they're excited when you're running the ball well, they understand kind of, you know, you know we'd have Plaxico Burris say, hey, I, they're double teaming, let's run the ball, run the ball, <laughs> and then when they stop double teaming me, then throw me the ball. Right. Right? But, you know, it wasn't just – Hey, I gotta get the ball because I gotta get the ball because you know yeah. I, I need. I'm trying to keep up with the league and, and receiving yards or catches. It was all very unselfish, you know, team oriented. Uh, you know, guys want to go out there and do it. You know, kind of win for each other. Right, right, man. I heard um, what was it? I I got it from Ray Allen. I'm not sure if he said it first, but he mentioned where would the world be if nobody cared who got the credit? Right, exactly. You know what I'm saying? It'd be good. That's pretty cool. Man, Elijah? Elijah. That's it. E-L-I-S-H-A. Elijah. Elijah. Manning. My guy. How do I get a cowboy hat? It's like a visor and a cowboy hat, right? There's no, there's nothing it's to just sweat. Man, listen. I, I didn't know, I didn't never seen that before. Man, you supposed to be taking me around. We in, yeah. yo, we in New York, you know what I'm saying? You supposed like, hey, Cam, boy, I got this spot. Ba, 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 ba. I'm trying to blend in. I'm trying to blend nah, in. Nah, man, I'm trying to blend out. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So, man, appreciate you, man. Thank appreciate you, the Cam. time. Appreciate it, man. Man, this was, this was easy. Oh, as we end things, we're going to start with this. No, Let's start with this camera, right? So everything that I do, you got to do. It's going to be respectful. It's not going to be anything demonizing or anything like that. You'll like it. Give you a lot of stripes in the, in, the, in the street cred, right? I think so. Here we go. We got one finger. One finger. One pinky. One pinky. One thumb. One thumb. One love. One love. Appreciate you, brother. <laughs> we out of here. Thank Appreciate you, it. Yes, sir. Thanks, guys.